So as you all know, the, the uh, title of my talk is the evolution of approaches and methods, right? So there is, so how the, the teaching methods and approaches changes over time, right? So from, from the, since the beginning of, not, not since the beginning of time, right? So, but since the beginning of like, so the, the SLA, right? So there is second language acquisition principle, right? So there is, okay. Uh, how I will try to explain you is, like, so I will try to um, pick out some of the most important uh, approaches and um, methods that 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 are that were popular along the along the course along the course, and then I will try to explain how how they came into existence, and you know, like so, and what what are the forces behind them, right? So what are the forces? So what are the uh, what are the like so underlying theories, right? So underlying theories of these approaches and methods, right? So that is uh, by by in that way, I will trying to give you a instead of giving you a uh, smaller details, I will trying to give you the bigger pictures. So that that is what I will uh, I expect to do in this um, in this seminar, right? So that's why I, I I'm not really sure whether it meets your <laughs> so expectation, but I will trying to give because like so you know you know um, if you read if you read all the uh, approaches and methods and things, uh, so many things there are. So because there are there is a diversity of approaches and methods in English language teaching, so you will be overwhelmed, right? You will be overwhelmed, and you will be you you won't know which is which and it, it would be e very easy to come you know like so to be confused so that's why I, I would like to give you a, a, some kind of an overview that I view of how like so things have evolved uh, along over the over the course of the time right so there is so uh, I think maybe some, some of you or most of you I, I think are already familiar with the approaches and methods, and and maybe not not all of them, right? So there is I'm not I'm not familiar with all of them, right? So all of the uh, approaches and methods, but I would like to present you my view, my view of how things has changed, right? So all maybe not my view, maybe things that I have like learned from from other theorists and and, and other teachers, right? So there is my my fellow teachers and my classmates and things like that, right? So there's, okay. So let me start with the um, grammar translation method. Maybe you, you might know that this is the very, very um, old method, right? So that is like, so, so in the older days, we don't have any other language classes, right? So what, we, what they have is like, uh, they have uh, Latin classes. So what they have, uh, as you know, Latin is some kind of a, not, not a very living language, right? So, so it is a sort of partial living or dead language that we, we, we usually say like, so there is no speaking or listening or things like that, right? There is no conversation. Maybe there are, there are some limited conversation going on in the, in, uh, inside the cathedrals and churches. But the thing is, so it is so very much death language, right? So that's why. So how they teach is the, the ask the students to, to uh, translate the translate the sentences and by by doing the translation they teach us like that right so that is so it it appeared okay, so the, it was the method that that was used uh, during that time 1840s and 1940s so during that century that was the the, the uh, standard method right so at the time and the main principle of that, that method, methodology is like, so the, as the students to read it and then develop the, you know, like so develop the um, ability to read in an, another language. So be, maybe it is Bible, right? So Bible, so because they're teaching Bible to read the Bible. So, so you, you need to learn the Bible to, to, to read it, right? So you need to learn the legend to read it. So what they are doing is they are asking, like, so they, they, they are, teaching their students to how to translate, how to translate. So that's why when it gets to teaching English, 
they start buying, doing like so, um, buying using the using this grammar translation method, right? So that is like so. This is the only method that is available at the time, right? So that is like so. People do not see any other way, right? So that is so. This is the only way, we, but it is so wrong, right? Because English is a living language, and Latin is a very, uh, very very much that language right so there is so the way you teach latin might not be suitable for teaching um, a language like english right so there is uh, so at, at the beginning of the 19th century it was the so standard standard method right? so and what are the principles of you know foundations of grammar translation methods so the goal, first thing is the goal is to, to acquire, to, to, to be able to read the literature, to be able to lead, read the text, not, not, not to be able to converse in another language. So the focus is to be able to read, write, and translate. Right? So, so um, and another thing is like, so in, in those days, as you know, like, so it is like, uh, because it is, uh, the teaching is also a bit uh, about uh, Bible and religious type, right? So text type. So, so grammar translation is teaching is very authoritative at the at the time, right? So, so they, they, they meet, right? So it is, and so they 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 ask the students to translate, learn the grammar rule, bind translating, and learning the grammar rule. They think that it would be. Uh, the foundation it would become the foundation of acquiring the a new language right so that is that is what what they think right so that is and so they they go about teaching with the, the grammar systematically right so that is so from explicit teaching they use the explicit teaching of grammar. so they they um, present the grammar rules and then they go from that uh, and then they, they make sentences, right? So, and then they, they, they try to read the text. And vocabulary learning is then by, you know, giving a, a list of words that are, you know, bilingual word list, and then they, you have to memorize them. And then you have to uh, memorize them and try to understand the meaning and then they, they read and they translate it. The goal is not accuracy. The goal, yeah, the goal is accuracy, not a communication, right? So that is so grammar translation is all about accuracy, all about grammar, and all about accuracy, all about translation. So it remind reminds me of our like uh, how how we pass the matriculation exam, right? So that is so how we uh, go, uh, how we experience our education right so in, in in our education this is like so we what we have to do is we read we translate and then and and uh we try to understand the grammar and then right so the, this is how we do it right so this is how we did it in 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 our whole years of high school or maybe in even so for some of you it is it, does, it is the case in university right so that is so i think so so maybe if you look at the year right so this is like so the method that the full 9040 right so but we are still using it so in in some of the cases so they, they are still using translation method to teach language right so it is so uh, okay so to counter that to counter the grammar translation method so another approach another method like so uh, appear or some some other people like so a, a, a person called Balitz, right? So there is Balitz, Max, Maximilian Balitz. So in then or maybe a develop a kind of a it, it was uh, in in response to grammar translation, right? So we, they think that grammar translation is not very effective, and then they're trying to change it to the other extreme, right? So that is grammar doesn't work. So we, let's change it to another extreme. So just forget about grammar. Let's just throw away all the grammar books and then just, so we were just do the direct method. So we were just do, we were without translating, we would just talk. We would just, you know, like, so use the language. 
So that is what we think, uh, what they think, right? So, so that's why uh, some of the people call direct methods Balitz method, right? So Balitz method is another name for uh, direct method. So it is at the 10th of the 19th century. So, so it is at the beginning, right? So that is, okay, 19th, 19th century. And then, right? So it is maybe in 1900, right? So that is, so. Mm -hmm without translating, right? So without translating, they, they try to use it. Right? So, but the problem is, so it, it is not so effective after all, right? So, it is like, so all talking all the time and, you know, like, so we, we damn the grammar, throw away the grammar and then, right? so, and we swing to that just talking and then doing, right? So that is like comprehension based, every, everything, right? So that is, but at the same time, it doesn't work that well. Partly because of the teachers, because like so the teachers cannot uh, are not like cannot talk in English all the time, right? So that is like so it it is not very. Maybe that there are some other things that that doesn't work, right? So the principle of the the, the direct method is like so so the the emphasize on correct pronunciation, and and they emphasize on speaking and listening. So this is just the direct opposite of like uh, grammar translation, right? So they, they, they just, uh, in grammar translation, we just read and, you know, read and um, trying to comprehend, right? Write, read and write. So now they just focus on speaking and listening, right? So there's just like uh, Tao Du Chen from like uh, Ariasi, right? So in Singapore, Ariasi, he always used to say, so this is a pendulum swing pendulum swing in, in, in methods, right? So that is like, so met, uh, the, the pendulum is swinging from one side to another, right? So that is, so grammar translation, let's focus on grammar. And then, so, and then the, the pendulum swing to like, let's focus on listening and speaking, right? So that don't, don't forget about grammar and then throw away the grammar. So, and vocabulary is taught like through no words and then at authentic objects, they use the real ear, right? So that is, so if, you, if you're going to talk about um, oranges, you have to buy the oranges, right? So that is, and, and, and the pictures, right? So that is, and the pictures and miming, right? So, so if you're talking about, so you might know that, right? So all of these um, methods and approaches are very much old and outdated, right? But some, they even still have some of the uses, right? So they're not useless, like so 100% useless, right? So there are some uh, uses that we can see we, we are still using, right? So from those methods, right? So even translation, right? So translation is still used, right? So in, in some of the textbook, you might see that even in more streamlined and cutting edge, cutting edge uh, textbook, you can still see some mining and and some like, so using them as techniques, not as approach, right? So using them as techniques, stay using, we don't believe in those kind of like uh, ideas and perspective. We don't have that's, uh, those perspective at uh, no more, right? So we don't have them anymore. But the thing is we, we stay using them, the techniques and, you know, like, so procedures, activities, okay? Uh, let me clear it, sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, they believe that the <laughs> students were self-correct, right? So self-correct themselves, right? So that is like, what, very ambitious, right? So the, the students were self-correct themselves and the self-correction is in, in, in courage, right? So, that is, so they, they ask them that the students do. And the curriculum is not stretch your own, uh, linguistic structures, it is not on grammar, it is on situations and topics. So, so you're talking about shopping or something like that, right? So communication is at the center. So these are the tenets or principles of uh, the red method, right? So that is, uh, and okay, so the, the goal is, the goal is to, to communicate, right? So that is like, so, so it is very, very much different from the, the grammar translation method, right? So for them is to just to read, just to read and accuracy is the goal. Okay, so some of the typical activities that they use it like is so a read, read text aloud, question and answer text, fill in, fill in the blanks, conversation tasks, and dictation. So dictation is something that they use 
and and and, and, and sometimes self uh, self correction, right? So there is like so self correction, and actually it should be in another line, right? So a, a typical activity in this nut that is like map drawing. So you give you give the direction, and then the 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 landers have to draw, right? So there is like so that, that is a the red method way of the red method, right? So there is so maybe uh, there was a thief, right? So there was the thief missing, and then uh, you have to give the description of the thief, and then uh, the, the the student have to draw the thief. So the thief has a <laughs> spectacles, and the thief has a, a short hair, something like that, right? So what? Uh, Fair complexity and something like that, right? So and and the student have to draw, right? So that is so by following the directions. So, so, so this is the red method, but it dies down. It popular it popularity dies down after ten years. So there was very short lived. Not not like not like it's like the British system, right? So that is so uh, so sad about uh, the red method, right? So that is so. So in response to the red map that we, there came the, another hero, right? So another hero appeared. Another hero is audio lingua method, right? So as we all know, so audio lingua method was like after 10 years, like so that is like in the late uh, 1950s and 1960s. So, so they were the popular method during that time. And, and they, the, 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 uh, you know, like so the, the method was based on behaviorist Theory. So there is a like behaviorist uh, uh, theorist believe that human learn by um, imitating other people. Right. So that it is also the case. It is the case in children. Right. So because the the, the children trying to like so they, for for example they are trying to imitate the the, the appearance. Right. So for, for by saying meme and mama mama and pepe. Right. So trying by by trying to uh, copying and imitating. So that's why they believe that second language can be learned, learned by then by you know like so imitating, right? So the, the teacher will pronounce like how are you, and then the, the students will have to repeat how are you, right? So by by doing like that, right? So they think they believe that the, the students will acquire the language and that they need to communicate. So Right, so this is by repetition, by imitation, and by reinforcement. Reinforcement here means like so when when the, the student A like so Mount Pokong, Mount Pokong, like so repeat the teachers in a very good way in, in with the correct pronunciation, and then you have to uh, praise him, right? So that is like so reinforcement, give the reinforcement. So that that's what they believe, right? So that is like so if some or maybe a let's say a dog, right? So a dog learn a good behavior, they give the food, right? So buying as a, as a re reinforcement. So this is like, so how, how the uh, behaviorist theorists view the, view the language learning. So they, they think that it is like, so by repetition, imitation and reinforcement, they think that, so people will learn the language, right? So I think maybe you, you have already you, you, you may be familiar with uh, the book called How Languages Learn by uh, Lightbow and Spider. Lightbow and Spider. There's, the book name is called How Languages Learn. Uh, you, might, you might be familiar with that. So they are the two uh, very prominent authors. Right, so that is how languages land. Right? So this is like a very, you know, a seminar, right? So I, I might say I, it, is, it is a prominent and seminar work. They, 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 a book, very, very good in introducing the theory and stuff like that. So they call it, they call audio lingual method as a grammar translation of audio lingual method that get it right from the beginning approach. Because like, so you have to get it right, get the grammar correct in the beginning, right? So that is like, so they believe that if you don't get it right in the beginning, right? So you will, you will get used to making mistakes and you the, the mistakes will fossilize, right? So that's why, so get it right. They, they, they think that it is, so they name it, right? So they dab it, right? As a get it right from the beginning approach. So for them is for audio language method. So you have to learn the forms first, and the meaning later, right? So you don't, don't right? So form is 
the first one, and meaning is later. So some principle, so uh, the language instructor teachers, so serve as the language model, and then the learners imitate or copy, repeat the model, right? So that is by, by, by so, and, and then they should be exposed to the target language all the time. And then, and so they use the dress brightest. So the, the, the learners have to, students have to repeat, right? So manipulate, transform the entrances, right? So that is like, so to complete a task. So they use a very structural syllabus. So that is different from the red method, right? So the red method use a, a, some kind of topical and, and fun, a, a little bit like functional notional. So notional and uh, syllabus, right? So, but for them is they use a structural syllabus and they focus on structures and forms and they do not tolerate any mistakes. So they, they correct it right away. They correct it right away. So this is, audio lingual method, right? So this is how they view, this is, so they are, they are a method that is based on behaviors, behaviorist view of learning, right? So behaviorist view of learning, maybe like BF, BF Skinner and bubble, uh, bubble, uh, something like that, right? So, so for them is linguistic competence is the main goal of instructions, not, not the communicated competence, right? So, it, so the, the students should be, uh, competent in linguistics, not the, 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 the language. So language itself, not in communication. So this is like, okay. So you were, can you see the pendulum swing there? Can you see the swing there? First, grammar translation, they think grammar is important. And then in the grammar that they know, communication is important, they swing it to another side. And then they swing it back back to linguistic, right? Oh no! So we we're wrong, right? So we right. So it is a U ten, right? So it is a U ten. They are going back to uh, grammar. They are going back to forms, right? So, it's, right? so very interesting. So the main activities in right, so the the, the audio lingual method is the, they have to memorize the dialogue and repetition drills. So how are you and how are you, right? So and transformation drills. So maybe they, they ask then you to, to change it into negative form. The teacher uh, give you the, uh, I like coffee, and then the students have to repeat it in, in the negative form. I don't like coffee, right? So something like that. So chain drays and question and answer drays. So all the thing is about drays, 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 because it is about repetition. It is about uh, copying, imitation, right? So it is. You might, have come across this book, or maybe the uh, translation of this book in your life, right? So there is like English 900. So this is uh, an example of a course book from audio lingua method, right? So based on behaviorist theory, based on, so this, this, this was published in 1964. This is how outdated it is, right? But still in Myanmar, some of the, you know, you can see it in the bookstore of, you know, I, I don't want to name the bookstore. So maybe even every bookstore, right? So you can see this book stay in the corner of like so the book, uh, the bookstore, right? So on the shelf. So it, they are still popular here. How amazing is that? Right? So, that is, so, so this is from the uh, 1964 and this is from the behaviorist perspective era. This is like the behaviorist era, okay? So now, and then another short lift, another short lift one, but very interesting, total physical response method that was born in, in the late 1970s, after 20 years of, you know, it doesn't mean that, I, I don't mean that the, the, the uh, there was a, some sort of black and white, or maybe a sharp, cat, a sharp point, right? So tiny point or cat, cat point between two one method and two method. It would be just like the uh, grammar translation is still going on, but to the physical response started to become popular, there was some kind of uh, overlapping years, right? So that is, so between the two approaches. So in the late 1970s, so the, the total physical response method was uh, initially popular and then so, it was a comprehension-based method, right? So you have to comprehend, you have to like, so, 
So the, the student, uh, the teacher will give you the instruction and then the student will have to, don't have to say anything. And then the student will have to uh, react by, to, to show their comprehension by, by moving their arms and legs and, you know, like so about body movement. So if the teacher say, touch your hair, and then the, the teacher will, uh, the student will have to touch, touch their hair, right? So that is, touch your head with your right hand. And then, right, so that the student will uh, follow the instruction, right? So, right, they, this uh, method might be well outdated, but some of its, uh, some of its techniques are still used during this day, right? So maybe you, you might say, you, know, you might already familiar with, the 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 uh, games called Simon Says, right? So Simon Says is the 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 exact uh, example of that the, the 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 good example of total physical response method, right? So that is like so if you're happy and you know it, clap your hand, right? So that is the total physical response, right? So you're responding responding to to the language, right? So that is like so with the physical, but we are not using it method. Right, so in a way that we, we do not believe that how languages should be uh, should be learned only by this way, but but it is still useful, partially useful, right? So that is, so uh, it is it is not hundred percent useless, right? So it is like so they, they they still have some good uses, okay? So the the teacher use the commands to direct behavior. So the teacher use the Right, so touch your hand, touch, touch your head, touch your nose, so that the student follow. And then they reverse the role, right? So that is like, so the teacher became the student, right? So the, or maybe the student became the teacher or something like that, the, the person who give the command, right? So that, and they start giving the command, right? Because they now know how to give the command, right? So first they just react and then they use the language, right? So that is like, uh, by, by doing that, it is, uh, they, they, they learn the language. It is, it is a, a short-lived one, 1970s. And then, so there is a, another era was born, right? So we'll get to the another era. So this is when Noam Chomsky came in, right? So that is so in 1965. So, so you might see that in, in here is 1970s, right? So up to 1970s, so the physical response is very CC popular. And then in 1965, so Noam Chomsky, like, so published or maybe popularized or some, some uh, a theory called universal grammar, UG, right? So in, 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 in short, right? So, it is. so he believed that we have some kind of uh, maybe like a computer or a device that in, in, in our head, head, in our brain, right? So to understand the language, to decode the language, to encode and decode the language, right? So that is why. So we have rules doesn't come from outside. So this is like a, a critical gesture from, from the previous, previous theorists and previous. So in the behaviorist uh, tradition, they believe that language came from outside because you have to imitate it. You have to copy it. But Noam Chomsky believed that language came from within. Language comes from our brain, right? Because we, we already have some kind of a functioning device, a device that, that create the language, right? So because, so uh, although the, let's say, behaviorists believe that, behaviorists uh, say that um, the, the babies, so learn the language from their mother and father, right? But at the same time, without, uh, without anybody teaching them anything, then sometimes they create sentences. Nobody, nobody teach them and they create sentences. Uh, they create sentences that nobody taught them. So that's why uh, Noam Chomsky believed that there is a universal grammar and there is a something in our head and you know, that, that makes us that enables us to understand the language. So this is how, what, what the Patsy and Lightbaum call innatist approach step, right? So innatist. So, so this is like innate. Language is innate. Language is 
within language is from our brain right so that is why so language is innate right so so born with us so language born with us so if you are if you're a human you can speak so this is just just like it right so that is like so we so they, they, this is what they believe and around the same time like so, so you might know that Croatian, right? So Croatian's very popular in, in this innate area. So around the same time, right? so uh, in 1982, right? So that is like, so not, not exactly in 1982, right? So because so they have been doing that for a long time, but in they published that, that, that uh, paper in 1982, so the, the monitor model. Right, so uh, the two points that I would like to point out in monitor model is that so so the first one is input hypothesis, right? So that is like language is learned from the input, right? So that is like if, if you can if you give the input, students can learn the language, right? So that is one thing, and another thing is uh, affected filter hypothesis. So these are the two out of five hypothesis that the 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 uh, Croatian proposed. So if you give if you listen and read, then you might comprehensible input, right? So if you give the enough amount of comprehensible input, students will learn the language gradually. That's that's what they believe. That what what at the time believe. And then another thing is affective. Affective mean like feeling, right? If you're worried. You might not learn anything, right? So if you if your affected filter is high, that means that you you are worried, right? So you're nervous. If you're nervous, you you may not be able to learn learn the language. So for them is it is important not to feel worried. So input is important. One thing is input is important. Another thing is so you, so the students should be relaxed. So two things, right? So there is a two important things. So this is like innate approach, right? So there's like you you give the input and then you can you can get the. It is all about feeling and, and it is all about right. So input. It is all about input, right? So that is like so. Out of this, so this is a theory, right? So this is a theory. Out of this theory, what what was born? Right? So that is natural approach. The natural approach. Natural approach was born. So according to the natural approach, so the, the students should be exposed to comprehensible input. They should be listened to, they should listen to uh, songs, you know, like stories. So, and, and the lesson should not be based around grammatical and vocabulary units. So they are going back, you know, they, it is just the opposite of, can you see that, right? So this is like a pendulum swing again. So the the so now so the firstly they talk about grammar and then so grammar translation method talk about grammar and then so after that the red method talk about uh, uh the, the the communication stuff like that and then they swim back to audio lingua method and then now natural approach they are going back to topics and things right so forget about grammar right so that is like so this is like grammar side. And this is like uh, some kind of uh, topics and uh, input and something like that side, right? So that is like comprehension based side. So, so at first grammar translation method thing that you should talk about grammar, you should learn from grammar. And then the, the red method say, no, we, we don't talk about grammar. And then right, so in audio language method, so they, they talk about grammar again, right? So that is, and now, we, we have come to natural approach and then natural approach say no we, we should talk, uh, we should base on things and topics not on grammatical and vocabulary units so it, it is all about unit right so there is like so uh, in principle of natural approaches so the the language instructor should give the comprehensible message oriented input for the acquisition and another thing is they should create a classroom uh, atmosphere, which is like so uh, comforting and welcoming, right? So relaxing atmosphere, because like if, if there is 
uh, high filter, students will not learn, right? So if there is only low filter, students will learn, right? So because if they are worried, they, they might not learn, right? So there's, so, and it, so they don't correct the error. The thing is, because it is natural approach, it should be natural. They don't correct the error. Because if you correct the error, so it will have a negative effect on the motivation. So it will, you know, raise up the, the effective filter. It will uh, raise up the, the nervousness. So that's why in natural approach, they don't, they, don't, they don't correct the students. So this is direct opposite from audio language method, right? In audio language method, they correct right away. They don't tolerate any mistakes. But now, error, correct, error is tolerated. They don't correct it anymore, right? So that is very strange. So, okay, and, and the, the main function of language teaching is to provide comprehensible input. Just input, just input. Read, listen. So this is very much like, um, not, not, not like, not like the remedy, the remedy that is listening and speaking, right? So this one is like the listening and reading, so it's just input. So the key to comprehension and oral production is the acquisition of vocabulary. So, so if they uh, uh, acquire the vocabulary, if they gain enough vocabulary, they will be able to produce. So without uh, doing anything, right? So without without uh, instructing them to to produce, without giving any room, uh, any sort of um, help or support from the teacher. So just read, read, read. If you read enough, you will be able to talk. That's what they assume in, in those days. Obviously, there's, this was also uh, your short lived, right? So there is like the, 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 main, uh, the main activities in the, the, the natural approaches, say so the, the comprehension activities, and then they, they, use, they use the instructions that are very short and understandable so that the, the students can understand. And then they use role plays and problem solving. So you might notice that we are still using role plays and problem solving now, even in those, even in these days, right? So that is like, even in these days, so modern teaching method that we use role play and problem solving. So in, in this method, that teacher use visual aids, pictures, gesture, miming, right? So they speak slowly, they modify their speech. So because like, so, Parents teach slowly so that the, 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 the children can understand, right? So now they think that, right? So that is, so if we speak slow enough, uh, students will understand English gradually, right? So that, that's what they think, right? So th this natural approach is assume that, like, so second language acquisition and first language acquisition is exactly the same. That's what they assume. For them, it's like second language acquisition and first language acquisition, they are the same. That, that's what they assume. That's what they believe. That's why people from in, in a approach, they usually talk about critical period hypothesis. So the, 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 the people talk about like so the, this, this hypothesis all the time. So, but not other theorists. Okay, so this is in approach. The first one is, Behaviorist approach, we talk about behaviorist and audio lingua method is behaviorist approach. This uh, natural approach is the innate approach based on uh, Chomsky ideas and, and Krashen's idea, right? So based on Chomsky idea of UG and then Krashen ideas of monetary theory. Okay. Then we tend to cognitive perspective, right? So cognitive perspective. So around, at around 1915, right, so the, there was a, a Swiss, I think Swiss biologist, right? So he was a Swiss biologist called B.A.J. Right? So his name is uh, Jin Jin B.A.J. I don't, uh, I forgot to uh, add his name. Yeah, his name is Jin B.A.J. Uh, notice that if you are at the same age, students tend to make the same mistakes. So he learned about that and then he, he devised a theory of uh, children development 
So cognitive theory, this, this was the, the starting point of cognitive theory. Right? So people tend to view learning from the cognitive perspective, not, not from the behaviorist perspective. It is not. So people from the behaviorist era think that, so learning is copying. But for PAJ, learning is more like uh, exploring, so observing and discovering. And thinking, right? So by doing that, people uh, people develop, right? So that is that is what what he believes, and and this his theory became became popular, and then uh, this is the uh, cognitive era, right? So that is, and at the same around the same time, right? So maybe around the same time, or maybe later, right? So a little bit later, people in uh, SLA second language acquisition, right? So theorists, right? So people focus has been shifted to, to attention and cognitive aspects of language learning. So they, they think that, oh, input alone is not, if you just listen, then you will not improve. So you need noticing, you need attention, you need attention. Input alone is not enough. So you need attention. So this is, so the input is, Innate approach, noticing and hypo attention is cognitive approach. People tend to see the language learning from the cognitive point of view, right? So from intelligence point of view. So the, the thinking point of view, right? So they, they're talking about, they start to talk about noticing. So even if you like, so teach, like, so for example, even if, if you give like, so students yesterday, I, uh, Maybe let's let's say yesterday I study something. Right? So I study biology for two hours. I say like that, right? So that is students will not pick up ED, pick up ED because they don't notice it. Even if they understand the meaning, they understand it. If they understand the meaning, right? So the, the, they was in the past, but they don't pick up. They don't naturally pick up. Uh, they don't naturally pick up the, the, the language item because they don't notice. That's what they think, right? So that is like, so, so th that's why Schmitz, so Richard Schmitz think that, you know, like, so we need noticing, noticing to, so, uh, to teach, right? So to teach noticing. So that's why they enhance the input. Maybe that they bow, they, 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 they write, they bow the, bow the vocabulary, target vocabulary, so both of target, or maybe, so change it in another way, add the glossary or something like that. So they try to modify the input. Okay, so this is uh, Schmidt's noticing hypothesis. And then, right, so that is like, so this is cognitive era, right? So cognitive, not much later, not much later. So there was a social 10, that we call it social 10 in SLA, right? So social 10 in, SLA, SLA is second language acquisition, right? So, so social ten in SLA. So people from like sociology point of view, right? So people trying to view learning from the sociology point of view. In the past, they, they view it from the behaviorist point of view, and, and then they, they view it from the cognitive point of view. And then now, right, so they view it from the sociological point of view, social cultural point of view. So you might know him, Bogorsky. So Bogorsky is a, a Soviet uh, theorist. Uh, he was a, also a teacher, right? So he devised a, uh, he, he developed a theory called like so the social, so uh, zoma proximal development. And then, and learning is by interaction for them, right? So for, so for, the, for the behaviorist, learning is copying, right? For the cognitics, so learning is thinking and internal. So for the uh, social cultural culturalists, they think that learning is in interaction. So it is like, so between intrapersonal, interpersonal, not intrapersonal, right? So that is, so in, in 
in Dabasana. So it is so with other people. So we have to learn with other people. We have to learn it from other people. So this theory was born and then so all together with this theory, along with this theory, there are so some of the social cognitive theories were born in SLA. So for example, interaction hypothesis from Long, right? So that is like Long. Long and then Mike Long, right? So, so he also have the name Mike, Mike Long, something like that, interaction hypothesis. So you need to interact, you need to interact to, 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 uh, to learn English. So not, not just, not just listening and reading, not just noticing, we also need to interact. So direct opposite from input hypothesis, Marie Swain, Marie Swain uh, uh, developed a theory called hypothesis called output hypothesis. This is just the opposite from input hypothesis. We also need output. If you don't speak, you will not learn, right? So that is, so it is output hypothesis was born, right? So from, from that perspective, they, they uh, so the thing is like, uh, okay, so these are the theories that, that were born in, in, the, in the age of social cultural. So we have already seen like, so four stages, right? So four stages, behaviorist, and then, uh, UG innatus, right? So that is innatus. And then we have already seen the cognitic. And then after that, we, we see social cultural, right? So social cultural. Social cognitive and social cultural, right? So that is so communicative language teaching approach, right? So became the uh, popular approach in the 1980s, right? The 1980s. So, so it is after 10 years of like natural approach. So people. Uh, so with, with the new theories, with the, you know, with the new hypothesis, people tend to change the, um, change the methods and approaches that they use. So gradually, right? So like, oh, we, we don't, uh, input alone is not enough. Oh, noticing is not enough. And then maybe we need interaction, right? So that is like, so after that, the, the right? So th this began the student center type of instruction and then they, they encourage the communicated competence, right? So, gram so it, it, it includes like so, uh, grammatical competence, pragmatic competence, strategic competence, sociological competence, everything, right? So that is like, not just, uh, not just grammatical competence, right? So there's not just linguistic competence. Okay, so learning needs is a priority, right? So for them. So it should be based on so not not on notional functional principle, right? So so notional functional principle mean like so notional mean like time and place, right? So time and place. So maybe they, they go at the station, at the tea shop, at the shopping center, right? So that is like so that that is a notional, right? So that is so and so they talk about time and place and functional is shopping, right? So functional. Asking, right? So agreeing, disagreeing. So they based uh, on notional and functional principles. So, so it is all about message. It is not not on form, right? So now it is about meaning. Right? It is about meaning. So three main features. So one person knows something, and the other person do not know something. So this is an information gap activity. So maybe you might also know that, right? So student A and student B, right? So they have the some kind of a half of the map, right? So half of the map and the, the map is not complete. And then the, the student A have to direct the student B and student B have to direct the student A. So, so together they form a complete map, right? So something like that, right? So that is a information gap that GBE is. And another thing is speaker has a choice. So speaker can choose whatever they want to talk, whatever, I mean, like, so in what way they want to talk, right? So that's why, like, so it is different from the previous approach. So in the previous approach or in audio lingua method, for example, like, so the language was fixed. So you have to imitate, copy. You cannot choose whatever you want to talk about. For example, if you want to talk about Mohinga, 
right? You have to learn about some of the how to call the uh, white stuff and how to call the uh, uh, soup in a soup the the, the soup in a uh, right way, right? So that is a broth or how how do you call it? How right? So that is like so the, the ingredients. So if you want to talk about uh, your 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 favorite dish, and then you can choose about mohinga, right? So that, that is like so the, the speaker has a choice, so they, they can talk about. Right? So that is. And the main purpose of the activity is like, so information is exchange, right? So it's information exchange. So that is like information that is received from the uh, listener, right? So they, 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 they exchange the uh, information. So these are the main activities in CLT, right? So that, that's what we call information gap activity, chips, jigsaw activity, reading, right? So for example, if, if it is a reading exercise, so the, the so divide it into four parts, for example, four parts divided into four parts and four students read the each part, right? So that is like one student each, student A reach part A and student B reach part two and student, uh, and then they exchange the information. They exchange the opinion, right? So that is that is how they do it, right? So jigsaw activities. As you might notice, so as the, the uh, theories and social psychologies and everything is changing. They are using some kind of collaborative learning, right? So collaborative learning, cooperative learning activities, right? So that is like, so jigsaw activity is one of the cooperative learning activities. So now student center, it began student center, it began cooperative, right? So that is, so uh, although the, the social psychology is not part of my dis discussion, right? So that is like, so I'm just talking about it because so it just popped up into my mind. So uh, opening role play, scramble sentences. So grammar is part of the instruction, but so they use the communicated grammar text, not, not just like explicit teaching, right? So there is that. Right? And, and picture strip story, they give you the picture and then you have to describe the picture and make it into a story or something like that. So, right? so some, these are the main activities, okay? So after that, after CLT, there is another approach. Actually, it is some kind of a, a, an alternative version of uh, CLT. So that's how I view it, right? So maybe you might not agree to the idea, right? So task-based language teaching. So they believe that, so language, if you want to learn about language, you, you should base on tasks. So ask the students to do the tasks. So the focus is on meaning and the focus is on how to achieve the tasks, right? So that is, in 1990s, this right? so main principle is, uh, so learners should be provided with opportunities that make the language and both they receive more comprehensible, right? So that is, and, and they should be engaged in context in which they need to produce output, which others can understand, and they should be exposed to, Real life language situation, real life, right? So that is like, okay. So if it is a task, it should, meaning must be a clear uh, key rule, not the forms. So focus on key, uh, meaning. And another thing is participants can choose linguistic resources. So it is not taught, right? They can choose. So very interesting, right? So meaning, meaning must be, uh, key role, and then you can choose uh, your what what you want to talk about, how you want to talk about, and then must resolve a communication based problem, wall problem. It is a real wall problem, right? So, uh, for example, like so shopping, right? So, or maybe uh, to do uh, maybe a meeting, right? So, a business meeting or something like that, right? So, there is a communication, a real life problem, right? So, so lenders should be assess in terms of task outcomes, not, not in terms of grammar and vocabulary, whether they achieve the task. Okay, for example, for example, I will give you an example. So let's say uh, student A and student B, right? So that is like, so I will get, just give you the, uh, student A have the responsibility to give the direction to student B. And then, Student A will have to explore what languages 
then what, what language expression can he can use? So he had to choose or maybe trying to find, right? So the language expressions. And then the, the real world problem is giving directions, right? So that is real world, real, it, it's a real world problem, right? So that is, so you have to give directions all the time. If the student B, if B gets to the, his, his desired destination, then the, the task is achieved. Then the, the task is successful, right? So that, that's why it is measured, it is assessed or measured by uh, task outcome, right? So task outcome. So not by language outcome. Okay, so it is not about learning, you know, like learning. It is not about learning how to give uh, the, 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 how to use uh, comparative or how to use, uh, how to pronounce 10 or how to pronounce left or something like that. No, right, so the test out scan, the test out can is, whether they achieve the goal, whether the goal is achieved, right? So that's why, so it is go about goal and then it is about whether they, they achieve the task. So if, if, they, if the student B gets to uh, the, 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 his, the way, he, the, the place he went to go, then student A is, he achieved the goal, right? So that is, a, the task is achieved, right? So, that is, so this is the idea of uh, task-based language teaching. Right? So that is, Okay, and they have like main main activities. Uh, so you can see that some of the activities were used in the uh, CLT, right? So that is uh, in the previous one, jigsaw activities, information gap activities, and then problem solving tasks, decision making tasks, and opinion exchange tasks. Okay, so what I want to uh, uh, connect you with the theory is. Right, so we, we talk about noticing gap, right? Noticing, noticing the gap hypothesis, right? So noticing, noticing hypothesis. So let's say, so I ask you to talk about, maybe to uh, to talk about the recipe, right? So to talk about, uh, to, to let, just, let's just do the previous example. So giving directions. So student A, hey, student A, give directions to, give directions to student B. So, and then, he doesn't know how to speak it, how, how to talk about it. So he trying to talk about it and he's still struggling. I turn right, turn, take the second knee, do, do the left, do the right on the, so he's still struggling. In this way, he noticed what kind of uh, language he needs, right? So this is a noticing hypothesis. So by doing, by doing output, by doing output, you can you can to notice what language you need, All right? And then so only after that language is taught, only after that the language expressions are taught. So this is what what the Pessy and Leibniz call get it right at the end. So audio lingual method is called get it right in the beginning. So this is uh, the CLD and the task-based language teaching is called get it right at the end approach. Right? So these are the, uh, you might notice that I, I skipped some of the, some of the maybe uh, important, some of the important um, approaches and methods, right? So because it, there are so many approaches and methods in, um, in ELT fees, right? So I just uh, cherry pick the one that I wanted, right? So, and I just want you to, to show the landscape, changing landscape, right? So that is a, that's why I, I chose only the, uh, the main important theory, theories and approaches, right? So that is, so I will, you know, recap what I have uh, presented. So the first thing is gram, grammar translation method. Like the grammar translation method is so from the uh, from learning the Latin and stuff like that. So the, the so this is grammar translation method. After that, we have the red method. Right. So they focus on so you so uh, 
Uh, on this side, we have like the grammar focus approach or maybe form focus approach, right? Your form focus approach. So here, like, so there is a meaning focus approach, right? So there is the red method. After that, we go back to form, right? So we go back to form, right? So this is grammar, uh, meaning, grammar, right? So there is audio language method. And then we have total physical response. Total physical response is a comprehension-based approach. So it is about meaning and then it is about comprehension, right? So total physical response. So this is the end of behaviorist era, right? So the behaviorist perspective. So this is so this is based on behaviorist theory, right? So language is learned by copying, right? So to the physical response is also copying, right? So that's why. So it is about imitation and copying and getting it right in the beginning. So this is a behaviorist approach. After that, we have natural approach. Natural approach is innate this approach, right? So what, what I have already said. So it based on UG, universal grammar, and monitor model by Krashen, and UG by the Noam, Noam Chomsky, right? So that is, so uh, people have the, some kind of um, innate device, right? So that is like, so we are born with it. We are born with the language. So, so that is what, what, they, what they believe, right? So that is, Okay, so this is uh, in latest era. And then after that, we have uh, communicated language teaching. And then we have task language teaching. So these are the era of uh, cognitive and social cultural theories. So it's all about zone of proximal development, interaction hypothesis, output hypothesis. So you know, the, the, these, these approaches are uh, informed by these theories. This approach is informed by this theory, right? So there is, so maybe there are some approaches that are very important called lexical approach, right? So in, in Suggestopedia, Silent Way, some, some, some are missing, right? So there is some are, miss, some are missing, but I, I don't want to talk about them. It would take a long time, a long, long time. So, so, so the thing is, um, this is how the ELT method evolves along the time, right? So it is. Now, nowadays, maybe we, we also have the principal eclecticism. So don't talk about the method, talk about the learners. Right? So if, if the learners, like, so if this method is suitable for this learner, Use it. Use that method. So this is like the eclecticism. You can use any method that suits your purpose. So that is the, what they believe, right? So that is like uh, maybe a post method approach, right? So that is like so principle eclecticism. Even if you believe in principle eclecticism, uh, you cannot throw away this theory, right? So uh, the, we we should be always informed by the social cultural theory and cognitive theories or learning and uh, uh, interaction hypothesis and output hypothesis and some other some other important hypothesis, right? So social cultural, cognitive hypothesis and social cultural hypothesis. Okay. So this is how I view, right? So about the evolution and the, the how, right? So firstly, we have theories of human learning like behaviorist theory and, and social cultural theory and, and, and cognitive theories. So this is a theory. And linguistic theories like UG, universal grammar, uh, generative grammar, or structural grammar, or something like that. These are the linguistic theory. So these linguistic theory inform the SLA theory. SLA theory is based on, so they, they get the idea or inspired by those theory. Right? So SLA theories, second language acquisition theories of language learning. So they think that, oh, there's a language learning should be like this, right? So this, this is what they believe. And then, and then out of these theories, we have approaches and methods, right? So but sometimes maybe directly, right? So that is like, so we don't have this thought. Sometimes like, so some of the theories just uh, influence directly upon the ELT approaches and method, right? So sometimes we don't have SLA theories to, to, to inform, right? So uh, the presentation has been very long. So sorry about that. <laughs> so I hope you're not, uh, I, I don't bore you, right? So that is, 
Okay. Uh, I would like to quote Rod Ellis here. Rod Ellis say, says in his book, right? So in his like uh, in his book called uh, Understanding Second Language Acquisition. Uh, uh, this book, in this book, like so he he says that um, SLA is a parasitic discipline. So so it parasites on other disciplines, right? So that is like so it's, um, on linguistics. On, on on human learning on psychology we we take we borrow all the theories so to be an english teacher if you just understand english language theories it might be enough but at the same time it would be better if you can understand the underlying theories so human learnings and psychology and everything if you can understand those theories and approaches. So it will, you will be more informed and you will be more, I don't know, like so the, the um, <laughs> perfect teacher. So as a gift, as a take home message. So these are the two take home messages. So theories of linguistics and human learning has influenced the evolution of ELT methodology. Along the way, you can see that a lot of forces and a lot of theories uh, lead to the evolution of English ELT methods and approaches. And then another thing should be that, that you should bear in mind is that later approaches are better than the earlier approaches. I mean better theorized, theorized then, not, not better, right? So better theorized. They have more theories to base on. For example, task-based language teaching. So so SLA, so the, the Rod Ellis said that task-based language teaching is the fully theorized approach. So some of the approaches in the past, they are not, they are theorized, they are based on theory, but they are not fully theorized. Every part of, you know, they explain partially, they explain the language learning partially, but not uh, completely. But nowadays, the, the, the methods and the, the methodology that we have, uh, CLT, for example, CLT and TVLT, they are better theorized. They have more theory, theoretical rationalization. Rationale, right? So that is, that's why, so maybe if you're, right, so that is, if you're, if you're a teacher, maybe if you're thinking about uh, how to build, uh, as a how to view, like how to um, visualize or language learning, how to understand language learning. Maybe you should try to focus more on the later approaches than early approaches. Right? So that is. So it doesn't mean that they are hundred percent useless, right? So that is. So they they are still useful in a way, but you know. So later approaches are better theorized. They have more theory based. Right? So this is my. Uh, presentation. And I think so. Thank you uh, for your time. So this is, this is the end of my presentation. I think maybe you might have some questions that I would like to, that you would like to ask me, or I, I don't know whether you, uh, <laughs> so you feel tired by listening, <laughs> listening to my presentation. So uh, this no, is a, like a long, long journey. Right? So there's no. like, no, at all. It's not tiring. Yeah, it's so interesting. And you can see the, the comments here. People are saying that it's fruitful, it's informative, it's effective, insightful. So all the positive words, uh, comments for your presentation. So that's great, yeah. So uh, Sias and Siamas, the participants now, the floor is yours. If you have questions and comments, you can write up your comments and questions in the chat box, or you can just have your mic open and ask uh, Sia Ang Chou directly. Okay, so here I can see a question here. For me, okay, it's from teacher Thelma. For Myanmar students, which approach is more suitable? Teacher center approach or learner center approach or both? Which one should be more? Can you suggest with the percentage? Uh, 
maybe like so what I believe, like so what I believe is so some of the people say uh, it should be a learning center approach, right? So whether it should not be either a student center or teacher center, uh, it should be learning center. As long as learning is there, you know, learning is learning is taking place. You should, you know, this approach works, right? So, but I believe I in my personally I believe uh, uh, student center approach works better than teacher center approach. Uh, but because like so we we learning take place only when the learners take uh, take responsibility for for his own his or own her own learning right so even if you're teaching uh, uh, and then if he doesn't start to take responsibility for his own his or her own learning then it would not be very uh, effective right so it would not be very efficient so the thing is and that's what that's what I believe. So, so it is not limited to it is not cultural specific concept. Concept it is universal. It is uh, it is universal, and it should be uh, we we should conform to the needs and wants of the students rather than uh, what what the teachers want to <laughs> want to teach. Right. So that's so that's why I think maybe there are some limitations. For example, like. So we have larger classes. So we have so many students in our class. Then, then there are so many. Even with the lecture, even with lecturing, you cannot say that it is a teacher-centered approach. If you can lecture it right, if you can lecture it in the right way, then it can be a student-centered approach, right? So if the your lecture suits the needs of the students, then we can say, no, oh, okay, so this is sort of student student center, right? So that is, so if people say, people sometimes mix up that, oh, so you're lecturing, you're not student center. Maybe that might not be right, right? So there's sometimes, yeah, I can understand that I used to be, a, I used to teach like so to, to the student, a classroom of like 200 students and 300 students. So, <laughs> so but sometimes you can do, do the group works, you can do the pair works, even with a thousand people, you can do the pair works, right? So that is talk to the talk to the person next to you. That that is as simple as it, it's get, it gets, right? So that is so it cannot be any simpler than that, that 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 is right. You can do the information sharing, inform, opinion sharing, pair work with a thousand people, right? So five hundred each. So just talk, right? So that is like so. This is I think that's what I believe, like so. Maybe we, we should go to even if there are limitations. Limitation doesn't mean we 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 have to stop and it is impossible. So we limitations mean that we, we still have to go on. Right? So that is like uh, so I think we should go to uh, student center approach. Um, no matter what the uh, limitations are and constraints are. So that that's what I believe in. Like so maybe there are some maybe things that uh, some other people might suggest the other way, but I, I don't believe so this is <laughs> this is the way. It yes, can be yeah. it can be different. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much, Sia. Uh, so uh, teachers and okay, Sia and Sia master participants. Now we have sent the the survey form and uh, the form for collecting your emails to send the certificates. So here you can see the link here. So can you please fill in a form? Yeah, but there's a question for Sia. Uh, it's from teacher Doe and she's asking if you can explain more about ZBD. Yeah. ZBD, so, so um, as I have, like, so if you, if you, ZPD is more like, you know, let's say, so we, we should see it in the uh, cycle, right? So that is like, so so let's say the student's level is here. So this is the student level. So this is like the comfort zone, right? So that is comfort zone is the uh, kind of some kind of buzzword these days, right? So that is, so you, you are in your comfort zone, right? So this is the, the what the learner can achieve without the, without the help of the teacher without the help of 
his peer without the help of anybody, right? So this is what Lana can achieve, right? So this is what Lana level is. ZBD is here. So this is ZBD level. ZBD level is, so the nearest possible level that he can go. Right? So ZBD mean zone or proximal the, the, the development. So that means the nearest possible level of achievement, the nearest possible. So, so where he can go from, from here, right? So this is like the nearest possible level of achievement. Next, next achievement, right? So that is like, so next level, nearest possible, maybe next, next level, right? So, so if the students know how to add when and when, then this is his level. But he, he doesn't know how to add one and two, one plus two. Then the, the, the teacher or maybe his friends come in and then right, so help them. So this is what, what we call it, scaffolding, right? Scaffolding. Or maybe if you uh, talk about it like so, or this is what we call, what we have to do the corrective feedback. Right. So this is when, this is where we have to do the correct. Maybe the learner can say, uh, uh, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. But he doesn't know how to talk about his daily routines. And then maybe so the, he talk about daily routines and he makes some mistakes. Then you have to give corrective feedback to notice, to notice, and then to uptake, to, to get, to learn from that mistakes, right? So that is, this is where, the corrective feedback came in. This is where so scaffolding means support, right? So support, you have to give the support. So this is the ZBD support. So support level, right? So maybe you can say support level. Another level is, so it is out of reachable, right? So it is not reachable. Even with the help, even with the help, you can, she, he or she cannot read it, or reach it, right? So that is like, so, by doing so, maybe he, this ZB, ZBD became his new comfort zone, right? So if you if you give this support and then he know how to plus uh, how to uh, add one and two, and now this is his new ZBD, right? So this is it. now he 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 got like so he know how to plus one and two. Now he, he will plus new ZBD and he doesn't know how to uh, add two and two, right? So that is. So new ZBD. So, so by giving some kind of support, or maybe when when language planning, for example. So in 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 Taspate language teaching, we have a, a terminological language planning, right? So when the students don't don't know how to say something, right? So a teacher can come in and plan the language together with the students. Right? So give give the give, so maybe you can say like this you can say like that maybe uh, it is ten take the second and on the right not take the second and first standing on the right right they take the second and on the left so something like the language planning right so so by helping them right so this is where we should help the students so this is that ZBD right so that is zone of proximal development this is the nearest next possible level right so there's um, um maybe so some of the people say that it is a challenging level so right so because it is comfort level so the first one is comfort level so you you are good at so speaking about uh how uh, your your daily routines but you're not you're still a bit struggling how to talk about your past yesterday and you know like so maybe president buffett is still giving you problem this is the challenging level so the teacher have to come in here so you have to give the support okay so challenging level is that right so maybe there are so many other ways to explain zbd but this is my way of explaining right so that is thank you thank you for your question it is a very very Interesting question. So, so, okay. Any other question? Thank you, Sia. Uh, thank you. There's, a, there's another question, Sia. Uh, it's from Sia Pomas. The question is, is grammar translation method suitable for Myanmar students all the time, especially for new system in Myanmar? So the answer is no. And uh, 
I think grammar translation is the oldest possible, you know, like method, right? So that is in, in language teaching. So, you know, avoid it at all course, right? So that is, so um, only maybe there is another um, approach that is getting popular these days. This is called translanguaging. Uh, I don't know how translanguaging. So this is, uh, translanguaging. So this is quite new. And then they think that translation can be useful sometimes, not all the time, right? So that is, so you, you it, it should be one that it is not, like, so you should go back to translation, no. So translanguaging, like, so maybe if you know, uh, translation has a place, translation has a place, but it doesn't mean that we should, the whole approach should, should be grammar translation. So it should be technique. It should be like a, a some part of the activity, right? So if you want to, for example, like if you want to uh, think them in the language at some time, right? So to get a fuller understanding of how language works, sometimes there should be some translation exercises. Sometimes, not all the time, right? So that is like if you're reading. Why do we read? Right? Why do we read? So why do we read in real life? So we went to because we want to get the meaning. We want to get what the text is about. When we, maybe for example, like in in the older days, we write love letters. Right? So that is so when when we receive a love letters, we want to know what what your lover is talking about, what your maybe some somebody is talking about. Right? So then, so this is the this is the language, right? So we should not be uh, focusing on, you know, like, so uh, lang language wise all the times, right? That is, so we should step by getting the message. So th this is how I believe, right? So it should be meaning focused. So uh, I would like to uh, show you the, uh, the, the uh, timeline again. So you might see that the grammar translation and audio lingual, they are the only form focus approaches right so on the other side of the uh, on the other side of the line right so that is like all the uh, all the methods are on the right side right so that is like so this is like so communicated language they are all meaning focused right so that is like so so language should be language teaching should be meaning focused so form form should come later right so form should come later so so some of the people are stay crazy about uh, input hypothesis. So they think that just by learning, you know, listening to songs and reading, the, 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 incidentally, they will pick up all the language and they will be able to talk. Maybe th this is uh, stay outdated and not very fully theorized. Right? So this is partly right. So in Paul Nation, as Paul Nation said, right? So that is like, so uh, the caution is like, uh, only a quarter right, right? So that is like only a quarter, right? So this is like, so he, he is right, but he is only a quarter, right? So that is like, so you should talk about uh, uh, input, yes. You should talk about output and you should talk about fluency and you should talk about uh, language, language focus. Language focus can less, right? So that is like, so uh, input, output and fluency and language focus, right? So, that is like, so this is like, uh, so if you are focusing on grammar translation, then you are just a quarter right. So that is only only one fourth, right? So that is that. Okay, thank you, thank you for your questions, Seah. Yeah. So. Thank you, thank you, Seah. Uh, do we have more questions and comments? You can you can talk directly from your microphone. You can have it on if you want. So far, I don't see any more questions here in the chat, in the chat box. And people are saying thank you and saying. Um, uh, I think maybe they, they <laughs> don't have any more questions, I guess. So uh, thank you everyone for giving your time and then, you know, uh, coming to my list, uh, seminar and listening to me very attentively. Thank you for all your questions and thank you for all your uh, praises and comments. Thank you. And, and thank you, Teacher Mimi Wien and, and MNT yeah. Sot for, 
for, for in fact, for we should be we should be thanking you, yeah, because today we've got opportunities to get to know the broad overview of the history of ELT. And it's amazing that you managed to include all the prominent approaches and methods in one session. And, and in fact, this webinar could well be extended or elaborated into a module for a master degree. Because you know, we know in when you are taking a master degree in English language teaching or some related courses, we have a module called methodology. So this is for one module for four months, for one time, for one semester. And you could, okay, I'll put everything here. And thank you very much. Yeah, it's amazing. We gain the rationale of the underlying theories on ELT methods and approaches. And we uh, uh, come to know, okay, uh, we came to know about what we do and how we do and what we do in our daily uh, language lessons. So um, just talking about this, I like to request you, we like to request you on behalf of everyone present here, would it be possible for you to run webinars in the future on each approach and method, methods uh, and the class activities based on them? somewhere sometime in the future when you have some time for us. So thank you very much, Seya, for a very clear, informative session and very impressive. And we also like to extend our thanks to Streamline Training and Learning Center for uh, sponsoring the Zoom account for all MNT SOL events. And we are also thankful to all MNT SOL volunteers, but not but uh, last but not least, we'd like to say thank you to all the participants for your enthusiasm in professional development and your great interest in MMT SOL events. So thank you so very much. Um, so if you have uh, filled in the forms and if you have got the, uh, the, the, the PowerPoint slides from SEA, you may leave or you may stay on, have a chat, it's up to you. Yeah, and uh, recorded videos, yes, okay, will be uploaded on YouTube very soon, yes. When we have got it, I mean, you know, when the internet lines are good, when we have the electricity, we will upload the videos. Uh, okay, here, okay, so someone is asking about the, 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 the PowerPoint, yeah. Uh, Sia has just shared it with you in the chat box. Yes. I will, I will try to share it again. Yes, sir. thank you. <laughs> thank yes. you, Sia. Yes, really amazing, Sia. Yeah, we learned a lot. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, everyone would feel the same. Yeah, so in a nutshell, you put everything together in a content way, but in a very nice manner. So we learned a lot. So the background of ELT, what we are doing now. Thank you so much, Sia. What I, what I was worried about is like, so I, I would be uh, doing a very exhaustive, <laughs> oh, yeah. exhaustive attempt. No, yeah. this. No, yeah. That's what, what I was worried about. No, 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 yeah, no, yeah. but in fact, okay, in, I think okay, everybody would feel the same. We would like to know more about each and every approach and methods that you mentioned today. Okay, uh, a bit more in details and uh, a bit more on the classroom practices, which we are doing now. For example, you mentioned that the task-based approach and the activities from the CLT. Uh, okay, so maybe you can okay, uh, give us more examples of them and so that we will be able to know, okay, okay, for example, uh, gap field activity, sorry, uh, information gap activity, why we do this, okay, why, what, what is the rationale behind it? So if you have time in the future, yeah, we are requesting you to run more sessions on this. Thank you, Tse. thank you. Thank you. I yes, I yeah, people, people are agreeing with me here. Yes, teacher, me, I do agree with, okay, so people, well, I'm saying that yes. Maybe, maybe uh, on more more practical on more practical side, right? So there is, uh, uh, today uh, you have uh, touched upon practical sides, but we want to know more on this. Okay, we are we are greedy, you know, the human beings. Okay, we we can never stop. Okay, wanting more and more, especially people like you, Sia. Okay, because you're knowledgeable and you're skilled, so you know we want to learn more from you, Sia.
Okay. Yeah, Sarah has also here, okay, shared the PowerPoint slides. Have you got the PowerPoint slides, Sarah's and Sarah's? Uh, yes, you to, yes, okay. Were you, uh, uh, were you able to download it, save it on your system? Yes. Okay. If you haven't got it, we will wait. Okay. We will wait for you until you can download. Or if you can't download it at all, we will send it to your to your email addresses. Stay in town. We can wait. We can wait. Yeah. Those who have finished, maybe you can you, you may want to leave. Yes. And we can okay say bye bye to you. But some people who are still downloading, okay, we'll wait for you. Yes, this is really useful, yeah. And those who have completed the TKT, for example, uh, Sia Hei, I think, okay, you may want to say something about this uh, webinar because in TKT module one, okay, we learned, uh, we discussed a bit about the history of ELD process. Okay, so do you have something to say to Sia? Uh, teacher, yes, in the you know TKD lessons, we learn uh, lots of teaching method and approaches, and and from this session, I come to know uh, these methods and approaches a bit more detailed than in the TKD session because yeah. at the time I think like we are a bit rushed in learning yes. and approach. Yes. I think it was our last day. Yes. Now I know lots yes. of. <laughs> yes, yes, it was only one small session. Yes, not as extensive as today's session. Yes. Thank you, Sia. Thank you, DJ, for giving a chance to say something to Sia. Yes. Maybe we can invite you to our TKT classes, yeah.